So, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Justin Howard. I am the Transportation Director here at North Middlesex Council of Governments. And we just wanted to thank everyone for uh, attending uh, our focus group meeting today, which is um, which is geared toward transit planning, transit uh, transit issues inside the Northern Middlesex region. And, and this is and this and this meeting is uh, just another part of our outreach of Envision 2050, which is our long range transportation plan for our region. So we have a we have an icebreaker. If you haven't entered in the chat yet, uh, the question is when was the last time you used public transit and where did you go? Just kind of a, uh, get an idea of, of how people use transit. Um, first off, I'd like to introduce uh, the people that uh, this, the team that's with me today. Uh, we have uh, with me today is Chris Curry, our transit manager. Uh, we have uh, Shravanti Gopala Narayanan, who's one of our transportation planners who will be helping with facilitation, as well as uh, Jessica Blanger, another one of our transportation planners. Um, who will be uh, helping with, with presenting here today. So with that, uh, I wanna do a little housekeeping first before we get going. Um, ground rules for the meeting. Uh, I believe everyone uh, is aware of this, but everyone has a voice. All views and opinions are valued. Uh, active listening is required. Everyone, please speak with respect. Everyone has different opinions on things and, and we, wanted, we wanna take everyone's opinions uh, into consideration. Um, one person speaks at a time, and even though it's okay not to agree, let's let's not uh, let's not do uh, too many too much arguing. Okay. Um, another piece of house, housekeeping: How do we participate in this meeting? So, if you would like to uh, speak up and 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 give us an uh, give us some of your thoughts, uh, what we'd like you to do is uh, rate use the raise your hand function in inside Zoom, it's uh, you basically just go down to your your uh, your little dashboard at the bottom of your screen and go to reactions and there you can hit the raise hand button. And once that once you do that, that'll notify us, the host, and we will um, ask you to speak. At that point, please just unmute yourself and share your thoughts. And and uh, during the meeting, we have a short presentation to give and. Um, we just ask that you mute yourself while other people are speaking. Um, just just makes it just makes the meeting go 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 easier. And with that, I'd just like to turn it over to uh, Jessica Belanger, who will give us an overview of of the RTP itself. Hi everyone, thanks for joining today. Um, as Justin said, my name is Jessica Belanger, and I'm one of the transportation planners working at NEMCOG. Today we'll start off by providing an overview of the RTP. We'll do a short review of the current conditions throughout the region, and then we'll separate the group off into breakout rooms, and then we'll finish up with ongoing activities and then our questions. Next slide, please. What is the Regional Transportation Plan? The Regional Transportation Plan has two objectives. The first is to establish a clear guide that identifies and analyzes our region's transportation infrastructure and service-related improvements. It's also, the purpose is also to direct transportation investment priorities over a minimum of a 20-year time horizon, and that's for all modes of transportation. Next slide. Envision 2050 is our comprehensive vision for the future of transportation in the NEMCOG region. By projecting and planning for anticipated growth over a period of 30 years, this plan will establish a foundation for cost-effective, energy-efficient, and equitable transportation options for all users. The topic areas we'll focus upon are economic vitality, safety, infrastructure, environmental and climate resiliency, accessibility and mobility options, connectivity and equity with an emphasis on communities that have been historically marginalized. Next slide. On your screen now, you will see our timeline for this project. Currently we are in January, 2023. So we're focused on our focus groups at this point. Um, we have met with all of our municipalities, all nine of the municipalities within our region in the month of December, as well as some of our industry partners like UMass Lowell, the LRTA and Mass Hire. 
In February and March, we will be developing a draft plan. And then in June, we will present a draft plan before the MPO. There'll be a 21 day public comment period and comments are accepted via email or um, we'll also accept written comments, phone calls. And um, those, co those comments will be integrated and the final plan will be endorsed hopefully in July of 2023. Next slide. And then I'll pass it over to my colleague, Chris Curry. Great, thank you, Jessica. Um, this is Chris Curry. I'm the uh, transit planner here at the uh, Council of Governments. I work closely with the LRTA. Um, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the transit services within the, uh, the region. Um, Currently, there are basically three transit uh, operators at, uh, within this uh, region. Um, MBTA commuter rail service uh, as a stops in Billerica and one in downtown Lowell. Um, the Merrimack Valley Transit Authority operates a bus between Lawrence and Lowell along Route 110 through Draken up the Huntsfall Bridge and into Lowell. And um, the LRTA, of course, has a broad coverage of service throughout the uh, Northern Middlesex region. Um, the map you see there uh, in front of you shows the uh, fixed route uh, service for the LRTA uh, in the colored uh, lines. And the light blue line in the background, uh, grayed out area, that's the ADA service area. Um, it's a three quarter mile buffer around each fixed route. And um, that's covered by the uh, LRTA Roadrunner demand response for people, uh, individuals who are uh, uh, unable to ride the fixed route due to a disability. Um, as you see, the LRTA offers service from the New Hampshire border uh, in Tingsboro down to the Burlington Mall and Lady Clinic in Burlington, and from the IR IBM facility in Littleton to the IRS facility in Andover, as well as a road that goes down to the Wilmington commuter rail station as well. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so the LRTA operates 19 fixed route buses, uh, bus routes, excuse me, a uh, total of uh, 42 buses in peak service. And that's roughly um, a weekdays during school between 2.45 and three o'clock in the afternoon is our busiest time. It covers around 255 miles of roadway. Um, and generally operates between 6 a.m. and 7.30 p.m. on weekdays. Now, some routes begin a little earlier, some end a little later. And on Saturdays, it operates uh, approximately from 7.15 to 7 p.m. Now, you see that on the right side of the screen is the, uh, our bar chart of, of our ridership. Prior to COVID um, in 2018 and 19 and before, we were running approximately uh, 1.4 million passenger trips a year. Um, then you see in 2020, when COVID really struck, um, our ridership dropped by um, 55 to 60% down to roughly approximately uh, uh, 635,000 trips and slowly gaining its way back, but it, it's gonna be a, a slow uh, growth. Okay, next slide, please. Now, the LRTA also runs the demand response service. It's a one to two day advanced uh, reservation service that picks people up, uh, passengers up at their homes or and brings them to the destination. Um, the, server, the services are provided by um, local councils on aging, as well as the low based ADA roadrunner service. Um, it's available in eight of the nine NIMCOG communities. Um, 19 minibuses are peak service within the COA services, and uh, the LRTA low based ADA service currently operates 11 buses, minibuses during its peak service. Um, the COA service, uh, uh, the senior service, operates on weekdays generally from 8 to 4, and the ADA service uh, operates through Roadrun of Lowell is required to operate during the same hours as the road, the fixed route. Um, now, let me pass this back to Jessica to uh, carry forward. Thank you. Oh, excuse me. Let me talk about the ridership. Yeah, the, we saw a drop from uh, 100, 
was roughly 110,000 trips during pre COVID days. And it dropped by a significant amount down to around 50,000 trips in 2020. And you can see that's growth back has been coming back at a much faster rate than the fixed route. Um, so it, 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 people who need Roadrunner are, are um, using Roadrunner. Thank you. Um, again, let's pass it back to Jessica. Thanks. Thanks, Chris. Um, so I think we can just jump right into the questions in the main group. We won't separate folks out into a separate breakout room. And Chris, Chris do you want to do the questioning and I can take notes? Sure. Yeah, we're gonna we're just gonna stay in, instead of the breakout rooms. We're gonna stay in the room. So, in in general, uh, we saw that some responses on the um, the icebreaker as far as people taking the transit. Um, how many actually ride the LRTA bus services or bus services and commuter rail within the region? Ethan, I see you. Ethan does. Uh, um, so uh, these, can you explain, Ethan, some of the challenges that you're seeing within uh, for reaching places you want to go or times you need? Yeah, I I would say I depend very much on the LRTA. And so where the LRTA can go pretty much limits what I have access to. Uh, yesterday, I ventured out a little bit and took not just my regular commuter bus the number 14 and tried out other lines you know line uh one and line 10 the the lo local buses within within Lowell just to see if I could get around and uh, for both of those situations they weren't really following up with the time schedule uh, in both cases they were on average 10 to 20 minutes behind what the stated schedule was on the on the actual website so I think one of the challenges I'm running into and probably the one of the main reasons why I haven't really ventured out beyond taking the bus for commuting to and from work is the um, first the punctuality and then the other one is the 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 frequency of the services. So I, I rather very much uh, depend almost by foot to for all of my daily needs. I, I live in HCD uh, ID, the Hamilton Canal Innovation District, so I'm within five ten minute walk of the Market Basket, Walgreens, CVS, um, and all of these uh, post office. So main, main, you know, I was saying the main facilities. And the reason I feel almost stuck in the area is because transit is very unreliable for for these uh, for these uses. So that's my overall impression so far, having relied on the services and and not driving at all in the region. Okay. Yeah. That, that... So just out of curiosity, when you say it's running like 10 minutes off schedule, is that running early? Is that from the departure time or is it from the, the general stops as identified? Or? It, is from, uh, it is from the identified stops. So not from the initial starting points. Uh, okay. I, I wouldn't know when, you know, if they actually departed late or, or on time. But from where I was waiting uh, once at Market Basket another time, at the intersection of, I think it was Broadway and Dutton Street, uh, it was essentially 10, 10 to 20 minutes behind schedule. Okay. Yeah, right, and, and, and the same is true for me when I take the commuter uh, bus line number 13. So that's inbound and I wait at the Middlesex Turnpike and Manning Road. Uh, yep. On average, this year has been a, has been a lot better. But la last year, I pretty much know that the bus always comes uh, minimally 10 minutes behind the stated schedule and sometimes up to 20 minutes behind the stated schedule. Right now, I, uh, for the most part, it's uh, at most only 10 minutes behind the stated schedule. So in a, in a sense, I, I have an internal clock of when the bus actually shows up versus when you know when when it states on on that particular schedule which which works if it's always consistently late but i have also run to situations where certain bus drivers are much better at sticking to the schedule or arriving early and and so i've had two instances where i've seen the bus pass me as i as oh, i walk yeah. in the adjusted you know adjusted schedule based on experience hey thank you um, yeah. Is anyone else uh, have issues that they'd like to bring up and talk about the uh, LRTA service?
Um, but how about uh, destinations? Does anyone have a, an issue with the destinations? Is that something that they're unable to get to on the, uh, uh, within the transportation, whether it's on LRT or some other service in the region? Uh, I have, uh, I think it would depend on what the LRTA is interested in, because I, I know the, it's a, the, the main interchange, the main mode is back uh, in the Gallagher uh, transfer station, but I do have a colleague who lives in Billerica and would be interested in having more local service where the LRTA runs within Billerica and it would be able to take them to, for example, Billerica, um, uh, the, the commuter rail station, not, not only one line that runs through it, but a few more options. So for example, right now for me, if I, the, the, 14, the 14 line, that the one that I take, doesn't go through the Billerica commuter rail station. And so, and, and he lives along this route. So if you were to try to go to the Billerica commuter rail station, he would have to take the 14 into Lowell and then take the 13 back down, which at least from a practical perspective, he might as well just take the commuter rail directly from Lowell or, or not at all. Thank you. Andrew, mentioning Billerica, is there uh, issues that uh, you see uh, or, or places you can't get to on the train or in the, or the bus system? Andrew Jennings, you hear me? Uh, yeah, there there are a lot of uh, issues, uh, and I'm saying this uh, uh, in the context of if there were unlimited uh, budget, and I, I recognize being a board member how tightly constrained uh, that uh, but budget is. Uh, the lowest income areas of town, uh, particularly on the Tewksbury line near the uh, trailer park uh, aren't served. The new uh, development, uh, housing developments along R Rangeway Road isn't served. The LRTA transfer policy uh, doesn't allow for transfers at locations other than Gallagher Terminal and having a transfer, uh, free transfer or the standard transfer uh, rates uh, <clears throat> between uh, uh, the 13 and 14 uh, would be uh, uh, quite, quite, quite useful. But I think my biggest concern is the whole issue of human services uh, transportation. As I understand it, uh, there is simultaneously with the regional transportation plan, uh, an update of the coordinated uh, human services public uh, transportation plan. Sure. And as I look at the map of Bill Ricca, where probably at least 40% uh, of uh, the uh, uh, area in town and probably close to an e equal area uh, percentage of the population is not accessible by roadrunner uh, is, isn't served. Uh, the whole LRTA does not have a consistent uh, uh, medical service uh, to the uh, uh, Boston area hospitals, which uh, are uh, uh, often uh, uh, needed, uh, unlike uh, the Cape Cod uh, Regional Transit Authority uh, and uh, so forth. So there are big issues in the, in the areas where people need it most in the human services transportation area. And I really don't have the uh, information from our senior center and others to say what, where are the biggest needs but, you know, I really like what things like Acton has done where they coordinated uh, uh, school uh, transport uh, services, uh, scheduled bus services, and uh, the senior and uh, human services uh, transportation uh, things uh, together. And I'm scratching my head in how to uh, uh, start uh, that kind of thing. I'm. I'm hope, hopeful that your meeting with the town of Billerica uh, raised these human services transportation uh, issues, but the, I think at the moment uh, that's uh, what uh, 
I need to focus on as far as uh, Bill Rick is concerned. No, we're good. No, I think uh, on the human services side, I think we will be reaching out to the councils, councils at some point uh, in the next few months to discuss um, what's going on with, with uh, the different, a lot of these the councils are operating their own um, long range um, transportations down to area hospitals and, and beyond the Boston Hospital as well and, and Concord Hospital. Um, so we you know, coordination between that is probably a, a very good thing. We can work out uh, one council bringing to people to another council that might have that service. Um, uh, any other hands and uh, we'd like to talk about uh, and the issues or? Chris, it's Bob Rafferty from uh, Hi, Bob. Human yeah. Western. So I regularly get calls from Chelmsford residents who are seeking transportation to, you know, uh, Emerson and Concord, various different doctors' office. Chelmsford doesn't seem to have much service through their COA outside of the town of Westford and currently uh, outside of the town of Chelmsford. And currently we only serve Westford residents. So that's a constant thing that we, we get calls from Chelmsford residents regularly. I've had a few people who might, you know, qualify as ADA participants, but in Westford are outside of that buffer zone who haven't been able to uh, qualify for transportation. Um, I've heard from a couple who want to get from Westford to Woburn. There's no real way to do that. And then just to echo uh, what Andrew was just saying, you know, trying to get to the Leahy Clinic is a big challenge from Westford and trying to get to those Boston um, hospitals is a big challenge for Westford as well. We do uh, go through the MBTA in Littleton, but for some of our older or less healthy um, seniors, it's a big challenge to transfer from mode of transportation to mode of transportation. And those seem to be the shortcomings out our way. Yeah, thank you. Hi, this is Debbie from Drake. Hi, Debbie. Good to see you again. Thanks. Um, we do all of that, guys. We go out into Boston. We go up to the North Shore. We go. We actually bring people out to Westford doctor's appointments. Um, I have a person at Jamaica Plain today. I brought two people out to um, Leahy Clinic yesterday. Now, we will pick up Drake seniors at their houses. The other senior centers will, um, or if you do not live in Drakeit, we ask that you just get to Drakeit. I've coordinated with both Tingsboro, Tewksbury, and I believe Chelmsford. They bring their seniors here and then we transport them to the long distance. Um, I understand and agree what Bob was saying that it is sometimes difficult to transfer from one bus to another but we do offer that service, not strictly to Drake at seniors. We offer that service as long as I'm available. And like right now, I'm probably booking about six weeks out on long distance rides, but we do offer the service. That's great to know, Debbie. I had no idea that you guys were doing that. I know yeah. at one point Rotten was doing that, but since the pandemic, they have not come back to that service. Oh, okay. So I'm sorry, Bob, where are you from? I'm in Westford. I'm That's a, what I thought. Yeah. So we yeah. actually bring people out to Westford Dermatology. Right. And there's another place out there that we bring people, but as long as I have the availability, right. then I've coordinated with the other senior centers or sometimes the person gets themselves here and we take them. Right. And Drake is generally outside of our transportation service area, but I don't know if we can adjust that. Right, through. if you're bringing somebody here to help them get to a long distance medical yeah. appointment. The thing is we're doing seven, 800 rides a month in three vans. So to take a van out of service that long right. and drink it becomes right. a difficulty. You know? right. That, right. That's always the difficulty. And I think that's why right now with a road runner and, and fixed route, we're all short on drivers right now. Yes. Um, but um, road runner did have that service to go to Boston one day a week. Uh, and pulling the vehicle off of the road, uh, one driver um, to be down in Boston was, was uh, tough to manage. Right. How about on the fixed route side? Is there any other um, 
places that people want to get to on, on uh, the, the bus system, through the bus system, or? Um, um, again, I know, I feel like you've dropped the route here that would allow people to come to the Drake at Senior Center. It used to be by request. On, on call, right. And then we were told that that was dropped completely. Which is a little disappointing. I mean, it's not like, you know, 10 people a day were trying to get here via that, but even the one or two people that can now no longer get here, they have to get dropped off up the street and then walk down. Okay, we can look into that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? A quiet crowd today. <laughs> do, do, pe do people use commuter rail? Ethan? Uh, my commuter rail is way down because of the change in ac activity. Yeah, prior to the pandemic, I was making about three round trips a month as a retired person uh, going uh, in and out of uh, Boston. Uh, last year, I made six round trips and they were almost all related to uh, getting to uh, Logan Airport. I find commuter rail to be the cheap, most cheapest, uh, most economic uh, way of uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, getting there. In terms of services, one of the things that has to go into this regional transportation plan is better coordination of uh, services. The MBTA uh, commuter rail uh, made uh, significant changes in order to improve commuter rail. Uh, they uh, uh, didn't consult with the LRTA and the Lowell line uh, changes broke all the uh, connections uh, to the uh, LRTA uh, 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 pulses. Uh, both the LRTA and the MBTA made uh, changes to Burlington uh, service uh, as a result of the pandemic, and neither of them consulted with the other before making the uh, changes. Uh, when I look at the LRTA map and look at the uh, services uh, uh, that we have to Westford, uh, the next uh, regional transit authority had a reverse commuter uh, bus pre-pandemic, which uh, terminated at the same place. Uh, the Westford route would have been a lot more useful to uh, people if those two could have been uh, coordinated uh, so that there was a through service from uh, Lowell to the Littleton uh, 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 T-Station. Now, again, being a board member, I recognize the difficulty of uh, that. There's no uh, funding for the joint uh, services. There's no legislative uh, mandate uh, for doing it. So that might uh, make uh, might make it necessary for some uh, significant lobbying among uh, a lot of uh, legislatures in order to make those joint services uh, changed. Uh, I am frustrated. I've lived in Billerica long enough that I took uh, the bus from South Station out to uh, Treble Cove Plaza uh, 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 one evening. Uh, historically, from Lowell, you had a through bus route to an MBTA hub. For a while, it was Kendall Square and uh, others. But because of historical reasons around the time and uh, Billerica's reluctance to fund any uh, transit uh, services after the MBTA was uh, expanded, that service was broken. And now you have a service with an hourly headway on the LRTA matching up, trying to match up with a service on a 50 minute headway uh, on the MBTA. It just doesn't uh, make sense. The real service levels could be improved if uh, that were a uh, uh, through bus. Uh, Chris, you're working with a group that's trying to get uh, service back uh, or, or service uh, out of the LRTA area to uh, uh, the area of Bedford that has the VA hospital and uh, Middlesex uh, Community College. It's a painful process to get this uh, coordination. We need Absolutely. to find a way of... 
keep and doing it better. So sorry about the rant, <laughs> uh, but nope. uh, there's a lot of work to do in uh, public transportation to uh, make it attractive. I think the best way of improving uh, uh, the economies of Billerica residents is to provide a good enough public transportation service so they can get rid of one uh, car out of their uh, stable of, of cars that they've got uh, parked uh, on their uh, property. All right, Hunter, please. Hello, I'm Hunter Baruby. I work for Mass Hires Workforce Board. Um, I just wanted to comment on the, I use the Lowell Station commuter rail to get to Boston a lot, um, to visit friends or to work on different projects. And one thing I know is uh, the last time I went, I went to use the restroom and I couldn't lock the door on the commuter rail. Um, so just as like a quality thing, I thought I should, it, this might be a place to mention that. Is that at the station itself? No, you, like on, on the, train the train itself. Oh, on the, okay. You could pass that along. Thank you. A more hands. Ethan. Yeah, so I, I also take the commuter rail, but like Andrew, I use it mostly to go directly to Boston or to the Logan Airport and and for the Logan Airport, I, I actually exit from Anderson Woburn and take the um, Express. Yeah, the Logan Express, which I find much more convenient than the three extra transfers that you have to do once you get to North Station. Yeah. And it it would be, you know, if I think it would be interesting to have that service somehow expanded up to Lowell, because I know there are similar services that go directly from the airport into New Hampshire um, and into Tewksbury, but it just skips Lowell and Billerica along the way, which adds to an extra a layer of coordination that I need on my on my end. Sometimes I just sit at Anderson Woburn for you know 30, 40 minutes waiting for the commuter rail to to show up and things of that nature. To, to have transit be an attractive option, having more coordination would assist with that. And I I've also come across a, I think a recent report talking about the possibility of electrifying the low line, the commuter rail, and improving headway on that service to down to 40, I think it was 42 minutes, if I'm not mistaken, from Lowell down to Boston, and also higher frequency. Uh, I would say if the plan is able to have support behind that, I, I see a lot of positives in, in pushing that forward and putting it on a higher you know, level of priority for the MBTA to look into. Yeah. And you're referring to the future, the Commonwealth report. Yeah. Yeah, where they're 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 looking the the, the plan is to electrify the entire commuter rail system. And right. um, funding is is obviously an issue with that. Right. But, uh, yeah. There's a lot of support for that. But there is, okay. yes. Okay. And significant benefits. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things I need to mention that uh, was just raised <clears throat> is the uh, loss of uh, intercity uh, bus service at uh, Lowell. Uh, it went from very limited to uh, uh, zero, and that really messes up uh, 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 getting to uh, get getting getting to things. Uh, uh, and uh, the service never really had the uh, frequency. The Mass Bus Plus program uh, uh, seems to be very uh, uh, quiet and there don't seem to be any volunteers on the uh, uh, private side to uh, expand interest. Uh, there is service uh, through the area from uh, Maine to New York City, but uh, it's, uh, stop uh, for the region is uh, at the Tewksbury Holiday Inn, which is very difficult to get to uh, by public transit. Thank you. Um, how about affordability of transit? Are there any issues with, with um, affordability? And we'd love to hear from people that haven't, that haven't uh, participated yet as well. I, I can share a bit of my input. I think uh, my perspective is coming, you know, from larger cities having had to pay for bus transit passes in much larger networks. So I, I would say the current pricing for me, at least, it seems reasonable. 
um, if there are ways to have it better, that would be useful as just as a reference point on a more affordable kind of pricing. In, in Montreal, they have, I think it's 90 Canadian dollars for their uh, zone one network. They have different zones now, I think it's zone A. So that's the entire island of Montreal for their metro network and their bus net network. Uh, that's for the full adult price. The reduced price for them is uh, 40, I think $51 now. But it's a much more extensive network with a lot more users. Um, the Baltimore one, as a student, I, I, as a postdoc, it was around 30 US dollars for, for their network. And, and so those are sort of the reference points that I have on the table. Um, it, it is from my experience taking transit, a lot of those who do take it are the ones who, at least the bus route I take, they're the ones who work in Burlington Mall. And, and so they, they would be the store clerks for the different, for Macy's and things of that nature and Wegmans, you know, along the way. So I think it would be necessary to consider what they're, uh, what they're able to afford because I'm not in the same, uh, the same income bracket. So I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to speak for, for them per se. Thank you, Ethan. That's really helpful. Um, I know that in response to COVID, the MBTA has really adjusted their price points to meet some of the, like the changing demands rather than having to purchase like a month long pass. Right. They were, they're more flexible bus and train pass options. Now you can buy like a 10 day pass, a five day pass to sort of help with that cost burden. Um, and I also um, caught Andrew's comment about the bus transfers. So it also ties into the affordability, but it'd be great to hear from some of the people that maybe they're a little bit more price sensitive down the road. And um, just an interesting analysis to find out how the cost is for those folks. Thank you for sharing that. I, I, I do find it a little bit convoluted though for, for purchasing the tickets. So there's only one machine in Lowell to purchase the pass. And I managed to accidentally break it once. And, and so and I couldn't get, get my, my pass from the machine. Then I had to go to a human who is only present during the time I have to come to work. So coordinating that become a challenge. Uh, and then I, I've also seen people purchase on buses directly. Uh, they Sometimes it looks like they put in five dollars or something and they get a ticket back and I don't I've never found explicit instructions on how to how to do that it, it, it feels like an insider knowledge kind of situation where once you've someone shown it to you or a bus driver's taught you how to do it then you're able to but right now the only thing I know is I can either give them my two dollars and not and have the machine keep the change or purchase a pass or use the value values I have on the Charlie card to tap. Yeah. When they get when the machine gives a ticket back, that's a change ticket. So I, I can't remember if it's either 50 cents, maybe 50 cents, anything above 50 cents it gives you a change ticket for. Um, oh, okay. so it's it's usually for people, you know, rather than having you can't afford the Charlie card or having as a okay money on it. You know? Got it. Got it. Yeah, that's good to know. And then how do you redeem the value on that card? It's the same as the car. You slide into the, the, the fare box and we'll take that as a fare. You know. Okay. And it has to be more than 50 cents. I believe that's the number. Thank you. Okay. It, yeah. And, a, and, one, yeah, and one last thing I've noticed also on the plaques for the bus stops, it advertises a real time bus information. It doesn't seem to work. Uh, I'm not the only person who's noticed it. Another bus rider who's who's lived in Lowell for four or five years now, he mentioned how he downloaded when it first initially came out and never really found it to be reliable or precise. And I've also tried it. And I don't think the buses are online anymore or in sync with that particular service. And And so if there's a way to either bring that back or to at least remove that information to cause confusion, I think that would also help. It, it, my understanding is that the uh, software it has been pulled from the service because we had some issues with it. Um, they went out for an RFP for new software. We hope to have that up and running by fall, uh, uh, probably the new year at the latest. But, okay. Uh, um, yeah. 
it, it was very convenient to be able to see the bus on the map coming around. You wouldn't have to worry about that five minute delay or you know um, the ten minutes late. As you can see, if it's got ten minutes late, right. so, well, they'll be back up again. Okay. Yeah, that would be great. Any other questions? Um, I got one more question, Chris. <laughs> I, let's talk a little bit about safety. If um, do you feel safe riding these riding transit? Are there are there any kind of conditions that uh, the LRTA or the MBA, MBTA can do to make it a, a safer trip for you? For personal safety, I have uh, not uh, been hesitant to use either one of the uh, uh, services. The whole COVID uh, situation has really cut down on activities that has reduced my uh, transit service. We aren't uh, yet going uh, to uh, concerts and crowded uh, events venues to any extent and COVID safety has affected transit uses although I recognize that the LRTA and M MBTA are uh, doing a reasonably good uh, job on their uh, vehicles uh, per se it's the safety of the whole trip that is of the uh, concern yeah and I, I, and I don't want to refer to like access to bus stops um you know, lack of sidewalks. Are you yeah. walking in the road? Are you crossing a four lane a four lane roadway? And, you know, for example, in Tuxbury, there's a bus stop in front of at, right near 495 that you have to cross a four lanes or five lanes of road to get to it. And there's no sidewalk to it. I mean, for me right now, I'm essentially crossing a construction zone. Middlesex uh, Turnpike. Yeah, Middlesex yeah. Turnpike and Manning Road. It's a big Road project. And, big project. Yeah, yeah, in particular that one because they took away the sidewalk for the northbound part of the road. So for 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 a long time, up until recently, we're still pretty much no sidewalk. But before we were pretty much waiting on the on the road, and and so, um, if if there is a way to mitigate that in the meanwhile you know with additional barriers for for us while we're waiting there or even just signage that would that would help with the situation yeah and you gotta be patient that 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 whole area is under construction and, yeah. And, yeah. <laughs> the plan is to have sidewalk in there for you and and, 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 a, and hopefully a crosswalk at that intersection as well yeah yeah Um, we want to wrap this up uh, at this point if um, no one else has any more comments. Jessica? Yeah, sounds good. Unless you have any other questions for us. Anything in the chat? In the chat, I just dropped an article and it's about, um, it's out of Arlington, Virginia, and it's looking at ridership data and um, real-time reporting of transportation and how that sort of connects with the user experience. So I just dropped that in the chat if folks have time to take a look at it. Um, Justin, I think we have one more slide before we finish. One second here. <laughs> oh, I went back to the beginning. Okay, um, so thank you all for coming here today and, and giving us your uh, your thoughts and opinions on, on some of the issues associated with transit. Um, just want to go over a couple of the, the things that are ongoing as part of the regional transportation plan update. Um, as you may know, we have we have an Envision 2050 survey uh, currently out that will be out until the end of January. Uh, we have the options for doing a meeting in a box, and we just want to, we want to thank Ethan for for or taking us up on that. Uh, that was really appreciated. We also have our next regional event 
which will be happening on March 22nd. And additional details will be available soon for that um, for that event. And stay tuned. And we'll we'll have a lot more uh, information to share uh, at that March meeting. Um, so stop share. Uh, with that, I just want to thank everyone for for attending today. And and with that, we can um, we can stop uh, stop the meeting. And you all can have a good day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much.